Welcome to Beer and Iron's Beer Beef Bone Broth Recipe. The backbone, pun intended, of any beef stew or soup is the broth you use. A great flavor-filled broth that you can make in your own kitchen will do for your soups and stews that no stock in a box could ever deliver. Start out with some nice quality and hopefully on sale stew and soup bones. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and that's about 175 Celsius. Add a bit of oil to the bottom of your pan. Smear that oil all over that pan with a paper towel. But save that paper towel. It makes a great fire starter. Now butchers will strip all the good meat from these bones and leave the bone and other connected tissue. That sounds pretty gross, but it's actually where a lot of the nutrition is trapped and flavor too if you know how to extract it. Just roughly fit those pieces of these bones like a little puzzle to the surface of that pot or pan you're going to be using to roast these bones in. A lot of this may look like really good meat, but most of it is just plain old fashioned connected tissue that would not be something you'd eat anyways. Just look at all that goodness, man oh man. Now put these bones in a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 175 Celsius, for about an hour or more, but not too much more. After an hour or so, get your hot mitts on. We use welding gloves. They work great. Pull the bones out. Look at that color. And fat. Hey, but don't toss that fat. You're going to need to keep that. Now here's before, and here's after. Here's before, and after. Now we're doing a pretty big batch here, so you'll need to free up some space for that pot we're going to simmer these bones in. But remember to save that fat. We're going to keep it for future sauteing and searing. We're using the big 9 quart Dutch oven, but a couple of 5 quarts would work perfect and the 7 quart may work okay for this. Now move all those roasted bones to that Dutch oven. Ah, the beer. Now we're going to be using a nice dark ale from a brewery called Iron Horse and part of their death series. Nope, not morbid or anything like that at all, but they could have called this beer Fluffy Bunny Hugs or Three Piles of Puppy Poo. Names are names. This is an amazing beer, whatever you call it, but a nice dark ale works very well. We want to use a lower IBU, International Bitters Unit, beer to avoid the broth tasting bitter at the end. Now, if you find yourself shy, just a little bit of that beer. You've already added six beers. It's okay to add a little more water to kind of top it off, but don't top it off too far. Most of these bones are gonna give out their liquid anyways. The meat and the tendons have liquid and they're gonna render their liquid into the broth. That's what we're looking for. Now get the heat going under your pot and cover it for about an hour or two on medium heat to get everything hot and simmery. Now about an hour or two later, give everything a look-see. Do you see how that liquid has seemingly risen higher? It's not. Everything is settling down. This is when we want to turn the heat down to low for the long haul. Now at this point, there's not a lot to do. Before bed, I usually give it a rotation. Now what do I mean by rotation? I move the bottom stuff to the top and the top stuff to the bottom. I use a wooden spoon or spatula so I don't scuff up my pot. Then I level everything off and I put the lid back on for a few more hours. After a few more hours, I come back and rotate the bones again. You'll notice this clear liquid floating at the top of the broth. That is the fat and will always float to the top. See how the bones and the tissues are all separating? This is working perfectly. Just rotate things a bit, level everything off and put the lid back on for a few more hours. Now look at here, later, do you see that blue light reflecting off the lid there at the bottom of the screen? Morning time. Rotate everything again. Hey, we're getting close. Now put the lid back on and feel free to come back and rotate once in a while as you need. I just waited till the end of the day to come back to the pot after that morning's rotation and here we are after about 24 hours, 25 if you count in the roasting period. Now the broth is ready and we need to separate the solid stuff from the broth. I let things cool down a little bit and let all the fat float to the top. You're going to need a mason jar or another hot liquid tolerant container to catch all that fat in. And also if you have it, grab a canning funnel, a big wide canning funnel. 
using a ladle or a large spoon. Now dip that edge of that spoon or ladle just to the surface to catch that fat. Here's how I do it. Press the ladle down with the ladle's edge level to the surface of the broth mixture. Press down just so until you see the clearish liquid start to flow into the ladle. Now inevitably you're going to catch some broth and that's okay. Just keep that in there. Don't worry about it. Set the jar on a flat, stable surface. Now put the canning funnel in there to make sure I don't spill this stuff all over the jar's rim and the counter of the lid. And then just ladle it in. Here, let me show you up close. See, there's a bit of broth and that's okay. And then just ladle it in. Now keep going until you start getting too much broth dipping over into that ladle. And the floating fat is only a thin bit of surface. You'll never get all the fat off that top, nor do you want to. That's not the goal. We need that fat to stay in our jars so when we get ready to cook here, we can spoon it off right out of the jar that the broth's in and use it to sear and saute. If you have a flat surface, go ahead and set your bowl and colander out. We set the bowl and colander out on an upside down lid to set up a nice flat surface on this gas stove top with all those gratings. Set your bowl and then insert your colander and start transferring the bones from the broth mixture to the colander. You'll not catch much liquid here, but you've spent a lot of time on this and you don't want to waste a drop. Now what to do with the bones? We count them as just being too soft for dogs to chew on. Now we are to the broth mixture with the pieces of ligaments, meat parts, and fat tissues. And there are still some small bones in this and we're going to find them as we go. After tossing the bones, we set the colander back in the bowl and start ladling the contents over for draining and separation. You could just pour it all in, but you'll miss an opportunity to find some more of those little tiny bones and pieces. In this case, we just had too much good stuff to risk spilling it everywhere. So we easy does it, right? Now as you find pieces of bone, just throw them out. Like this one. We're going to use that meatish stuff later and I don't want any sharp bones in that. Once the liquid in the bowl has reached the bottom of the colander, pull it out, set it aside, and pour the liquid, the broth, into the jar you're going to save your final broth in, either to store in the refrigerator or you can set it aside for tonight's dinner. Using the trusty canning funnel, if you've got one, pour the broth over into the jar. Set the bowl colander combo there near the pot and if you've got a manageable amount of contents left and weight, that pot is pretty heavy, pour the mixture into the colander. Do you see all those tiny bone pieces? Lift the colander up and out. There's still a lot of goodness on that meatish stuff and still some small bone pieces. Hang on to it. We're going to wash it and then we're going to use that meatish stuff for a recipe later. Trust me, you're going to love this. And jar up the remaining pure beef bone broth. Level off the jars if you have more than one jar. Now back to the black pot. Now get all those little bone pieces out. We're going to use this in a food processor later. and It'll make a racket if you got some bone pieces in there. Now this is not a step. And essentially you could be done creating your broth right here and right now. But I want to demonstrate how much broth is still in this meatish mixture. Look at all that good stuff. We definitely need to wash it. I'm going to explain how to wash it. We're about to wash this mixture and get another quart sized jar of a broth like substance that will still make the most awesome soups or stews. Now let me put this meatish stuff back over into our bowl colander combo and fish out a few more of these bones. Let's get back to our steps. Now, do you see why I call it meatish stuff, M-E-A-T-I-S-H? There's flavor and nutrition in that, but I bet trying to chew that would be like trying to chew a piece of beef flavored hubba bubba bubble gum. Once all the meatish stuff is over in the colander and bowl, use something to press down on that meatish stuff to kind of squish out more of that broth. And once you get that bit of broth, go ahead and add it to one of the jars with the pure broth. Dump the meatish stuff in the empty bowl. If the bowl's too small, get a bigger one. And if it's been recently dirtied through this process, just use it anyways. Don't worry about it. Now I've got these pale Mexican lagers that most folks will be able to identify. But a craft pale ale lager will work just fine. 
pour the contents of the two bottles in a bowl large enough to handle 24 ounces of beer and the amount of meatish stuff that you have left. I dump the meatish stuff and start mixing and washing it off. The fat that's been produced will be semi-solid at room temperature and will solidify in the refrigerator, kind of like butter does. But when you mix these somewhat cool beers with all that meatish stuff, the fat will start to clump up and look even less appealing than before. No worries, it's expected. Now set your bowl out, put the colander back in, and pour the meatish beer-soaked stuff into the colander and press it out. Lift it out, drip for a second or two, and what do you get? You get a lighter broth-like material that has bits of fat on top. Pretty simple, but pretty delicious. This broth is going to gel up like most bone broths when you put this in the refrigerator, but not as gel-like as the pure, darker bone broth we've already separated. My suggestion is not to mix the dark, pure broth with this broth-like wash that we created here with those two beers. Keep them separate and use them in different recipes. This is just extra stuff that would have gone to waste. So basically, bathe, stir, strain, press, jar, and then do it one more time. Just press to get as much out as you can. Then add the liquid to the jar with the broth-like liquid. And what do you know? We're done. There are two jars of pure beer beef bone broth right there. And here at the top is the fat. And there's our other one, our beer broth-like broth that we did with the beer wash over that meatish stuff. It may not look appealing in these jars, but trust me, this is perfect. And here's some of the fat we got from the initial roasting and from what we ladled off the top of that broth as it was simmering. Now you remember that meatish stuff, M-E-A-T-I-S-H, with all that ligament and fat and pieces of meat? That stuff we're going to use in a recipe, but not for folks. We're going to use it for dogs. It's going to make the perfect dog biscuit, trust me. The recipe is in the description. And of course, I made a video of the process. And these dogs love them. I'm talking like covet sin love. Shame on you love. A link to the dog biscuit video is in the description. I appreciate every one of you for watching Beer and Iron's Beer Beef Bone Broth Recipe. Enjoy.